It's story time! It's story time! 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 Yeah! So we are back with more of the Christopher Church Mouse Treasury. And we are going to see what kind of trouble little Christopher gets into again. This one is called A Flood of Friends. Story time, it's story time. Something was tickling Christopher's whiskers as he lay in bed. Quit, he squeaked in his sleep. Oh, don't tickle me. Then he opened one eye and giggled. It was just the wind tickling him. He breathed in. What a wonderful smell. It must be lilacs. He had just been dreaming of another beautiful spring morning about this time last year when something very special happened and this is what it was it was the nicest spring morning yet christopher jumped out of bed and brushed his whiskers and gave his tail a tweak to get the kink out of it he looked out the window he couldn't wait to play but said ted and ned his cousins were away on vacation and his friend mandy had to work as Christopher sadly buttoned the straps on his overalls, he heard Mama Church Mouse, Come on, Christopher, breakfast is ready. Christopher and his mother always had breakfast together, since Papa went to work early. Mama, Christopher glumly said as he sat down, I wish I had someone to play with. He picked up a piece of fruit. I wish I could play with you, dear, but I must go shopping this morning. Mandy's mother is going to take care of your baby sister. I wish I had a friend who could always play. That would be nice, but sometimes it's nice to play alone. But, oh, Mama, I still want someone else today. Where can I find a friend? Mama, Mama leaned back in her chair. Well, I don't know exactly where you can find a friend, but I do know how. You do? How? Christopher asked eagerly. The Bible says a man who has friends must himself be friendly. Why, I'm friendly. I think God means being a friend. Hmm, like being kind? and sharing with someone? Yes, Chris frowned. But there's not anyone around for me to be a friend to, Mama. Well, the day isn't over yet. After breakfast, Christopher put on his sweater and went outside. It was such a beautiful day. A day to do just anything. Why, it would be a perfect day to roller skate, but that wasn't fun alone. It would also be a nice day to play ball, but how can you play ball alone? Christopher thought gloomily. He scuffed his nose in the dirt. What good was a nice day if you were all alone? He sat down on the steps of the church in a pout. Good morning, said a little voice. Christopher looked up in surprise. Another little mouse was standing in front of him. Hello, how are you, said Christopher. Oh, hello, who are you, said Christopher. My name is Freddie Fieldmouse. Fieldmouse, what's yours? Christopher Church Mouse, I live here in the church. He looked critically at the strange little mouse. He was very plain looking. His clothes were shabby. He was dusty all over, and in his paw, he carried an old beat-up suitcase with stuff hanging out of it on all sides. Where are you going? I don't know, Freddy. I, I don't know, Freddy said quietly. You don't know, Christopher, <laughs> squeaked Christopher. How come?
Well, said Freddy, it's a long story, but to make it short, I'm looking for a new home. You see, I'm a field house from the country, but my home was washed away by spring floods. I need a nice dry home. You don't know any, you don't know of any around here, do you? Christopher looked Freddy over again. Nope, he answered, not here. You see, we're all church mice. We live in the church. I see, said the field mouse in a disappointed voice. Maybe I could find something on down the road. It was nice to meet you, Mr. Church Mouse. Christopher watched the little mouse trudge down the road, lugging the suitcase. He just wouldn't fit in with us, Chris thought. Now he could just barely see him far down the road. Suddenly, Christopher jumped to his feet and ran down the road. Freddy! Freddy Field Mouse! Wait! Wait! Freddy stopped in the middle of the road. Freddy! Christopher pa panted. I'm sorry, there is room in the church. Come on. He grabbed for Freddy's suitcase. Let's hurry. But Freddy wouldn't let go of his suitcase. What's the matter? I said you can come live at the church. But, but, wait, sputtered Freddy. You don't know. I didn't tell you. I'm not alone. You aren't? Questioned Christopher, looking around curiously to see who was with him. No, I'm not. Well, at least I won't be. You, you see, my family had sent me ahead to look for homes for all of us field mice. All of our homes were destroyed. Oh, said Christopher in an understanding way. Well, we probably have enough room for all of you. How many are there? Well, with my Aunt Frida and her 10 children, ugh, there will be uh, 18, I guess. Freddy said quietly, I'm sure you don't have that much room, so I'll just be going along. Christopher grabbed Freddy. Let's go see my mama. Let's go see my mama. Freddie, <laughs> she will know if we have enough room. Let's go ask her. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to cause you any trouble. I, come on, Christopher interrupted. I'm your friend, Freddie, and I'm going to help you. Let's go. And with that, he took Freddie's suitcase and tugged Freddie along. Just then, they saw Ma Mama carrying her market basket out on the road. Mama, Christopher hurried toward her. Mama, this is my new friend. Freddy Field Mouse. Why, how nice, exclaimed Mama. Where are you from, Freddy? The country, ma'am. Mama said, Cur Mama said, Cur Mama said, Christopher anxiously. Do we have any room in the church? What I mean is, Freddy's home and his family's have been destroyed by the spring floods. Freddy's family has sent him ahead to look for homes for them. We have room, don't we? Don't we, Mama? Why, I'm sure we do, Christopher, answered Mama. We have an old storeroom that we can turn into apartments very easily. Where is your family now, Freddy? They're coming along slowly with all, the ch all of the children and mice babies. <laughs> They can't travel very fast. Well, we must get busy, said Mama briskly. Do you think they will be here by lunchtime? I expect so, but but you certainly don't have... Christopher, I must go on to the store. You take Freddie home and begin cleaning up, cleaning up that storeroom. I'll be right back and stir up some of my good crumb... My good crumb stew. With a flounce of her skirt, Mama bustled down the road. The two mice boys worked very hard, sweeping and dusting in the old storeroom and carting away some rubbish. By the time Mama was back, it was shining clean. Freddy went down the road to meet his family. The delicious smell of crumb stew was filling the air when he brought them to the church mouse door. How can we ever thank you, said Father's, Freddy's father, as they were introduced. Oh, think nothing of it, answered Mama. And soon all the little children and their mamas and papas were hungrily eating crumb stew. Christopher and Freddy bustled about, helping to serve them. 
Freddie was so happy his eyes were shining. Christopher's face was beaming as he thought of how he now had a whole kitchen full of friends. The next few days were very busy. Ones as a uh, the next few days were very busy ones as the church mouse family helped the field mice get settled in their new apartments. Then Aunt Snooty and her family arrived back from vacation. Are they here? asked Aunt Snooty, coming into the church church mouse home. Mama looked up. Why, who do you mean? Those pesky field mice, answered Aunt Snooty. Oh no, they're in their own apartments. They're all settled in now. Well, I never, exclaimed Aunt Snooty, peering at Mama through her glass eyepiece. I can't imagine what has gotten into you. Letting those field mice clutter up your storeroom with all their junk and eat all your food. Why don't you think we should help a mouse family that is in need? Questioned Mama in surprise. Well, maybe a church mouse family, but certainly not a field mice. They certainly aren't going to be freeload. <laughs> they, they certainly aren't going to freeload on us. And Aunt Snooty flounced out and slammed the door. How sad, said Mama. One night, sometime later, Papa Church Mouse suddenly woke up, knowing that something was very wrong. He sat up sniffing, feeling danger all around him. He carefully put his feet down on the floor. There was water there, up to his ankles. Mama, Mama, wake up, take the baby. There's water all over the floor. You must go to a higher place right away. Chris and I would wake the others. Christopher and Papa ran all over the church basement, awaking the other church, church mice and field mice. We must all get up on the steps. <clears throat> It looks like a water pipe has burst. The whole basement is flooding. The church was filled with mice squealing with terror. Christopher helped the grown-up mice swim the mice babies to safety. They held the babies' heads high above the water. They handed them up to their mamas. Mama Church Mouse was counting all of the mice on the steps. Papa, she squeaked, I don't see Grandpa and Grandma. And Grandma, Grandpa, oh. <laughs> Papa, she squeaked. I don't see Grandpa and Grandma Church Mouse and Uncle Rudy and Aunt Snooty's family. Suddenly, Christopher, Christopher realized that Freddie Field Mice and his family were missing too. They had, been night, they had been right behind them an hour ago, but now they were gone and the water was rising. Freddie, wailed Christopher. Freddie, where are you? But he didn't hear an answer and he began to cry. Just then, there was a little sound from the water. It was the sound of baby mice crying. Peering around the corners of the stairs, he saw Freddie and his family. Each field mouse had a baby church mouse in his paws, holding them high above the water. And there were Uncle Rudy, <clears throat> Aunt Snooty, and their older children said Ted and Ned, swimming in the water and floating on some small pieces of wood were Grandpa and Grandma Church Mouse. Papa, look, the field mice have saved the rest of our family, squealed Christopher excitedly. The mice reached the steps. Aunt Snooty was crying. But you're rescued, Aunt Snooty, said Christopher. Aunt Snooty, <clears throat> Aunt Snooty turned around to Freddie's family. Oh, please forgive me for the awful things I've said about you. I've been terribly, well, snooty. At that, excuse me, at that, all of the mice began to laugh and hug each other. And the field mice never returned to their houses in the country, but they remained in the church where they had found true friendship.
And here are the this this the and here are the discussion starters. Why was Christopher sad and lonely? How did Mama say Christopher could find a friend? What did the Bible verse mean about being friendly? Why did Christopher not want Freddie Fieldmice for a friend at first? How did Christopher and his family show real friendship for the field mice? What did the field mice do for the church mice? Do you have all the friends you want? How can you be a better friend? I hope you enjoyed this story today and we'll be back for more. It's story time! 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 Story